What's up y'all? If you clicked on this video, you probably don't know how to play cricket. But by the end of this video, you'll be able to play cricket like a pro. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the field. Cricket is played on a giant oval, generally between 450 feet and 500 feet long. In the middle of that oval is a rectangle called the pitch. The pitch is 66 by 10 feet. On each side of the pitch are three vertical poles called wickets. And on top of those wickets are two little rod things called bales. Now that we know how the field works, let's discuss the positions. There are two teams with 11 players each, and two umpires, and yes, they do wear the funny hats in real life. The defense will have all 11 players out on the field. One of them is what's known as the bowler. He's the dude throwing the ball. And he is gonna stand behind the wickets. Then you have this guy called the wicket keeper. The wicket keeper squats down behind the wickets opposite the bowler. His job is to catch the ball if it gets to him. We'll talk more about that later. The other nine guys are just spread out across the field. Now let's talk about the offense. There are two guys on the field at the same time. One is called the striker and one is called the non-striker. Both of them stand at opposite ends of the pitch and have a flat bat. The striker and the non-striker are referred to collectively as batsmen. The batsman's goal is to score as many points as possible. How does one score a point? Well, I'm glad you asked. It starts with the bowler. He's going to bowl the ball, which means he's going to bounce the ball to the striker. The striker then tries to hit the ball. If the striker hits the ball, then both of the batsmen run to the other wickets, and they get one point. If it was a well-hit ball, then they keep switching sides and keep racking up more and more points. So what if the striker and the non-striker ended up on opposite sides that they started? Well, the non-striker becomes the striker, and vice versa. If the ball is hit really hard, and it touches the boundary, that's four points. If the ball is hit extremely hard, and it goes over the boundary, that's six points. Let's talk about outs. The first way a striker can get out is if he hits the ball, and a fielder catches the ball before it hits the ground. Second is if the bails are knocked off the wickets. There are several ways this can happen. One way is if the striker misses the ball, and it hits the wickets. Another is if the striker misses the ball, the ball misses the wickets, and the wicket keeper catches the ball, he can then knock the bales off the wickets. Or if a fielder gets the ball, they can knock the bales off the wickets before the batsmen are safely there. The third way a striker can get out is if the ball hits the striker, and the umpire thinks that the ball would have hit the wickets if the striker wasn't in the way. Once the striker is out, he's replaced by a new team member. There are several forms of cricket but I'm going to be talking about T20 cricket, since that's the most popular. In this version of cricket, you have two innings. In the first inning, Team A bats. In the second inning, Team B bats. An inning ends when 10 out of the 11 players are out, or there's a total of 120 bowls. You may be thinking, two innings? The game can only last for an hour at most. Wrong. T20 games usually last about three hours but some forms of cricket can last up to five days. I'm not sure how long that is in metric units, but trust me, that's a long time. That's how you play cricket. If you learned anything, be sure to give this video a like. Let me know if I missed any rules down in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't. I post content like this weekly. I love y'all. Have a great day. I was like 16.